What's up, you guys? Unauthorized opinions review here. UFL, the game backed by Ronaldo. It's so loud in my ears right now that I have to turn it down. But this Ronaldo back game was actually pretty surprisingly good. I'm not going to lie, you guys. And I'm going to show you. I played a few games online, and you know I was able to jump right into it. We'll play that again before we get to some of the footage. I was able to jump right into it. The controls are pretty much the same. You know. Everything that you know, if you're a long-time FIFA or EAFC player, you're going to be able to jump into it, and you're going to be able to play the game without any real, you know, learning curve. He loves you. We love him. He's looking all handsome. Let's get into some of the gameplay that I went with here. Um... And yeah, this is me. You, you basically start off, you'd select who you want to take. I, of course, went with De Bruyne because I can't be one of these people who just automatically takes Cristiano Ronaldo, even though I had a feeling that the game would be you know, slanted to him uh, right away. And one thing you'll notice is that the goalie there, starting goalie 68, was surprisingly pretty good. And I didn't have... Even when I went out and bought a few more players, I didn't feel the need to get a keeper until later, just because I had the points, right? I didn't feel the need to, to get a keeper because 68 was working pretty well. Here's me going through the controls and being like, oh, it's pretty much the same. I've been playing EAFC recently, and I'm glad to see the controls are the same. I haven't played EA since it was changed to EF EAFC, except for the last like like, like three weeks because I wanted to be able to prepare and compare these properly. And you'll be pleasantly surprised. We're not gonna be playing unranked right here. We're serious. I haven't played an online soccer, a soccer game online in probably a decade, but I was willing to do it for this because I knew it's a new game for everybody. And I've been playing FIFA or EAFC and obviously it hasn't changed very much at all. I thought this was a lot faster to load than any EA game I've ever played, um, NHL, uh, F FIFA, which I'll probably keep calling it FIFA, and Madden. A lot faster, a lot smoother. The best sport in the world news Park. Hath news Park. So the first Today thing I noticed that I wrote down... I'm going to turn it down a bit more. I don't know how loud it's going to be for you guys. The first thing I noticed was the input. So you're going to see me playing here. And the input is a bit delayed, I thought, on the button pressing. Maybe that's just online, but of course it's the only option they're giving you right now. And I felt it was a little bit, a little bit like playing FIFA 50, 10 to 15 years ago. I found myself uh, predicting the other person, being predicted. So it's like a little chess match of not necessarily skill, but prediction, right? It's like when you're a kid and you're figuring out the CPU. <laughs> um... um and you sort of just learn what they can do. So that's what it felt like. And the, and sadly, and I know I said I haven't played EAFC in the last couple of years, but sadly, this reminded me of like Euro 2004, that era, the, the early to mid 2000s FIFA games where it was like delayed. The movements were delayed and you were basically predicting and counter predicting where people are gonna go. You're, you're seeing passes here, I'm thinking that I basically need to go through these basic shots here. Is this a chip shot? Yeah, that's a great chip shot by me from a giveaway. You'll notice here a problem I had was after the goal, you can't really celebrate very well. It's not very well done in that matter. So that's one of the cons. But you'll see I basically wanted the strategy of do some precise passes, really play some football, some soccer, make sure I'm making precise passes and not being foolish. I got a little bit more relaxed with that as the games went on. Um, but I tried to be careful because I hate losing. I absolutely hate losing. I covet the winning streak. And that's just a beautiful shot by me with De Bruyne. And I was off to the races. But as for the strikings and sh striking and shots, we just saw me score that goal. Overall, I thought it was pretty damn good. Uh, there was good variance in the shots, good power variances in what you could do. You see that finesse shot, that's a 68 goalie saving that. And the, those finesse shots are pretty much exactly the same as EA. Right bumper, R1, you could try to curl it around the goalie. 
Um, you see a header there. I wasn't too impressed with those, but um, uh, EAFC probably this is probably one of the stronger points. The shooting for UFL was like like I said. There's more power variance. There's more striking variance. I was pretty happy with that. Now the heading is where you'll notice probably the biggest eyesore in the game. And we saw one there. It wasn't the greatest. It was an example of the typical header in this game, honestly. there, There's, um... Players will be glued to the ball. There's a lot of floating involved. Um, the team who made the pass, you know, or the cross is far more likely to win the ball than the opposing team, unless the opposing team's completely in front of the guy. Are we going to score here? That's off the post. And then we score, but he's offside. But yeah, you're going to see a lot of Super Mario jumping in the in the heading, and that was, I think, if you're looking at the game and you're saying what was the worst thing about it, that was probably it. Some of those headers were, you felt glued to the ball and you're, you might jump 20 feet in the air and uh, look like you're riding an invisible elevator sort of thing. Now the passing, as I kick it out of bounds, <laughs> there was problem with some auto-targeting for the passing, and it was like the pass assistance, pass assistance was on very high. And I'm the type of guy who says, turn it all off, let me make my own mistakes. Save for maybe like lob through passes or something like that, but I turn that off too. So I'm a guy, and maybe you're a guy, maybe you're a... We, we'll, we'll save the, the trans jokes, but maybe you're a guy who turns off all the stuff here. And, you're, and if you are, you're going to be a little bit disappointed with how much pass magnetism there is, for example. There's also, you're seeing on these passes, too much power. As in, if I turn around and I'm falling backwards, falling away from the ball, I can still get it to a guy 50 feet away with power on it. Or if I'm moving to the left, I can still get an outside foot pass to a guy cross field with a through pass, like a lead pass. And um, I, I think that was a little bit... A little bit off there. And you're going to see a penalty here. We'll take a minute. He missed it. You'll you'll notice the penalties are exactly like... We'll talk about that. The penalties are exactly like FIFA from probably five, six, seven years ago. Where you, you get the little target. You can turn it off. And it basically, if you hold it too long, it's going to go wide. If you hold it too far up high, it's going to go um, too far up. So it's not the best system, but it's familiar and it works. So I had no problem with that. Can we score here? No. That's another problem I've always had. Finesse shots right at the goalie. So back to what I was saying with um, with passing. Hopefully you can turn down or completely turn off pass assistance like you can in EA. Now we just saw a corner. And uh, I guess we could, we could lump that in with crosses a little bit. But I thought crosses worked. I thought crosses worked really well in this game, you guys. I thought that uh, through passes worked really well. Uh, and the crosses worked well, unless it came to headers. And But the problem with the regular crosses with square and X, which is, of course, something you'll be familiar with from the other games, is that it magnetized or auto adjusted to the guy right near you a few times so something I wrote down was that like there was a time where I'm uh, I'm the center back and um, I'm trying to hoof it upfield basically to another player we gonna get a goal here no where are we we are this is where I start to fall apart by the way so I'm, I'm trying to get the ball upfield with a cross I power up a big square or X for a cross, and it just goes in a high arcing, super short distance to the guy right in front of me. So it basically screws me over with the pass assist by going to the guy right in front of me, even though I filled the bar. Um, it went right to him. Just pausing to see if this is where I collapse. Yes, it is. <laughs> So that's a problem, a bit of a problem I had on defense there was honestly, it was really easy in some situations and way too hard in other situations. So in the midfield, you'll notice that like if you can guess what a guy's doing or if you're right next to him, it's pretty easy to get the ball off of him. So safe passes like they are in any situation are the best, the best way to go. 
But I thought it was too easy in the midfield to get the ball off of somebody one-on-one. -on -one. But when it comes to the center backs, um, you know, turning was too slow. Um, it It's basically a one-and-done situation. So if you make a mistake, you're definitely paying for it. Now, if you, if you want to say that's close to real life and that's why... That's why it's better than all power too, if you like that. But it's something about it felt a little off. Like if I'm a center back, I should have more power than a lot of the midfielders and a lot of the strikers. And if I make a tiny little bit of mistake, I could probably use my body to get back into position. That's what I think EA does better at. It's a little bit more forgiving, whether that's realistic or not. I'm not. I'm not going to debate. But I just think that overall, the experience of playing as a center back on FIFA, I thought was more forgiving and more satisfying and it made it in this game in ufl it was easier to completely dismantle a center back just as one striker against like two or three center backs so i thought that was i thought that was a significant difference how how difficult it was to play defense in your own box um against a striker um a lot of work needs to be done in that regard if you're asking me and I think FIFA does it better he misses that shot wide um, you, there needs to be more in-between touches for the dribbling and, and the running frankly because I thought when when you're going on a run whether you've knocked it on or not whether you're just you know pressing the trigger to sprint I thought there weren't enough in-between steps I thought it was hard to keep the ball again this is like these are old problems that we used to have with EA I want to see what happens here. No. Those are old problems that we used to have with EA where there weren't enough in-between touches. And if, if you try to go on a sprint, then somebody's just going to take the ball away from you. That's what I found happened a lot in this game. That if you do too much, um, you know, sprinting forward movements or diagonal movements, somebody's going to step into that path and there's not much you can do about it. So in-between touches, in-between dribbles, um, more ways... See, that, that was a header there that nobody moved on. And I'm fairly certain that both of us pressed the button. I know I did. <laughs> but in between touches and steps for simple moves and uh, running is what, something I wrote down. Now, you've been, you've been seeing the keepers. This game's almost up. You've been seeing the keepers, and frankly, they were great. Um, the keepers couldn't handle every shot you threw at them because, as most people saw I had a 68 there and what I meant uh, was most people had goalies that were not that high ranked so I think that probably played into it you take a shot at them and even if it was right at them they they kind of parried it left or right or they couldn't handle it fully but I thought on cro uh, on finesse shots it wasn't easy to just keep doing the same type of shot all the time and score so that was Something that I th noted was really good about this game is that I pretty much had no problems with how the keepers moved or react. I thought realistic goals happened. I should have scored there. And you can see, that was probably a different bounce than you'd get in EA. And I thought the keepers, whatever they did with them, was something they did really well. And even at a low level, they can still make basic saves. I should have scored there too, right guys? 92nd minute. Keepers were really maybe the best thing that they did in the game besides having good power and shot variances. Let's see what happens here. Should have done better there. I could sense the rising levels of his manager's disappointment. He wins the aerial duel and takes possession. That was the last action of the game. We're very happy to welcome you to this clash. The teams are heading out onto the pitch. The surface is perfect. The weather is excellent, so there are absolutely no excuses today. It's time for a special... So in this game, of course, playing Trusters FC, which is what we are. We're playing a guy who wants to be Arsenal. He's got Ronaldo. And I think this is where you're really going to see um, where this guy... 
basically showcases how overpowered Ronaldo is. And one of the one of the you know ways that people were were scoring yesterday was you know the old pass it to Ronaldo. You're you're seeing some of this here. What I complained about was with the inability to really keep up with a player, even though it's Ronaldo. I mean, he he's a lot older now. I don't think a you know, a 76 rated center back or whatever it is should have too much of an issue getting a physical edge over Ronaldo um, if they're a big enough guy. You also see there that there is the bit of the one on one that I thought was a little too easy for them. But something you'll notice here that a lot of people did was um, go straight up the middle, get it to Ronaldo, and then it's really hard to get it off of him. And I understand. You want to showcase this game. He's on your. He's on the cover of it. I, I think he might be having some money behind it. Not sure. But as you can see, he's just dancing around. It's really hard to keep the ball off of him. I've got like five or six chances to do so. He still holds on to it. Keep, still Ronaldo. Still Ronaldo. Still Ronaldo. You know what I'm saying? Something else I want to mention from this game as we watch me get trounced here. Um, we can skip a little bit further ahead, I think. Let's go to the second half. Down 2-0. I'm not sure if I get scored on again. Oh, mistimed that challenge. Kevin De Bruyne. Palm the ball away. That's what I mean. There's really good save variants on, on the balls. A really good shot variance. And let's see what happens here. Do I score? I managed to get it in there. But you see, I didn't really like that header. That's the guy skips my precious replay. See, I'm not sure what really happens there. We, a few times when we're, I was playing, um, a person will go up to a header and the, the hit detection so far off that, like... That's what it looks like to me, is that it doesn't even hit him in the head. I wish we could have gotten a replay on that. So you can see it's not really at his head there. And that was one of the problems. I, like I said, the heading was probably the biggest eyesore in this game. And I think that's the thing that needs the most work. On set pieces like that, I thought the controls were a little loose. Again, they're going with the targeting system, like... EA did years ago where um, you know you can turn you can toggle the reticle on and off and you know it's everybody's guess where you're putting it next so it, it's familiar enough but I don't think it's good enough quite yet so that would be a complaint that I have that it was largely the same as FIFA for the set pieces and the and the free kicks and the penalties you see that fancy pass L2 left trigger to do that, of course. See, that's my fault. I, I, got, I got to put those away, right? Um, for free kicks, I had a little bit of a, of a problem with the indirect free kick. It's a small thing that I just, you know, I tried to boot it up the field with a circle with a shot. <clears throat> and it and it just doesn't work. There's no input for that, so I had to use square, right? But sometimes you just want to kick it up the field. It was like, like the end of the half, and I was like, whatever, it doesn't matter. That's just a small thing that I think is obviously easily corrected. But I should be able to use the shot function for a free kick. Is this going to be another Ronaldo? No, I, also, I actually thought I had a chance here because I stopped Ronaldo on that one. Let's draw back a little bit. See, yeah, like, this guy's whole plan this whole time was clearly just get it to Ronaldo, and he can go through the whole team three guys there had a chance to get him none of them converged so I think the defense is really something that needs working on we can go to the final game well this wasn't the final game I played but um, I think I played four games shout out to Jet here by the way so some some familiar um, some familiar soundtracks there but so I played four games. I wanted to win after losing that other one. I had a draw and a loss. I ended up winning here. And uh, we can just use this as a backdrop. I won two more games. We can use this as the backdrop of, of the summary here. Biggest cons. 
Move, the movement was loose and delayed. It was reminiscent of about 15 years ago, I'd say, maybe even more. That was probably the biggest problem with the game. The headers were terrible and hard to judge and hard to look at in every single way. Defending as a, as a center back was a little bit too hard, especially in 1v1 battles. You need That, that needs a lot of work. It's very difficult to stop a striker or a player from the other team inside the box. Uh, the post-goal animations were not as obvious or clear as you would like them to be, and the pass assistance was definitely too high. The pros, though, the animations look really good. You can jump in and play with almost identical controls as EA, which I thought was very smart. There was no learning curve for me to jump in and play this game and try it out for myself. The goalkeeping, I thought, was nearly perfect, and that was probably the most perfect part of the game in terms of this beta and there was more shot and pass animations than EA has especially in in years past there was more variance to shot power shot type uh, rebounds uh, goalie parries and everything I think than EA so I think that's something that's really to build on and of course with the online there the matchmaking and stability was better than I've ever seen with an EA game I didn't suffer any lag didn't suffer any delays. It was all good. And, and really what I'm hoping for is a franchise or dynasty mode, but I could see myself buying this game, you know, as long as they have something like that. But may, maybe not even. I, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, maybe if they had just the online version, I'd have enough fun with that so long as they worked on the stuff that we've talked about and so long as that I'm not matched with somebody who's playing the game 24-7 all power to them and has like 99 overalls I hope there's there's some matchmaking with people that are more maybe I guess it's just by rank right but I'd be excited to play a franchise mode if they iterated it into the game and if they can improve on the movement the defense and the headers hopefully they can do some more things that EA can't especially in a franchise mode overall I would give this game as it stands, if this was released today, like a 6.2. I, I w wouldn't pay for it unless I was feeling really vengeful towards EA, which I might be, right? I'd play it if it was free, probably, once in a while. But maybe not. Again, like, it's not... If I'm being completely honest, it's not as good of a game as EAFC, but it can be. They're in 